Hi guys, this is Mr. Mitchell. Today we're going to be looking at electromagnetic waves. So um, we're going to begin this by kind of revisiting the mechanical waves we've talked about in the past. And so um, when we looked at mechanical waves, we said, all right, how are these things created? And so uh, we had a source of energy that's going to make one single particle oscillate or move back and forth in an organized way. And so it's going to be just consistent up and down and up and down and up and down, like the slinky example we did in class. Um, and so the energy that is given to that particle is then carried to the particles that are surrounding it because of the molecular bonds that hold them together. So I move this particle, since it's connected to the next one, then that connection makes the next particle move, and it just kind of goes over and over and over again because all the particles are connected to each other. So I have a, a quick simulation example here that we're going to look at. And so if I move that, then the wave kind of travels all the way through the the um, string there. If I could set it on oscillating, it's the same thing. So we saw the, the spring oscillate up and down. This is just kind of a repetitive motion. We see that waveform that we looked at and labeled. So that's a, a mechanical wave. Well, what about electromagnetic waves? Because that's the whole point of this, right? That's what we're talking about today. Well, it's, a it's similar how we get the wave out of it, but the results are a little bit different. So um, for an electromagnetic wave, a source of energy makes a charged particle oscillate. So a particle that has either a positive or negative charge um, is going to move up and down. All right. And so what happens from that is instead of the particle making things next to it move, it causes this wave of electric and magnetic energy to go outward away from the particle itself. And so we're going to look at an example of a radio tower. All right, and the radio tower has an electron here, and the electron's going to move up and down. I can take it and move it up and down, and then I see these electromagnetic waves kind of move outward away from that moving electron. I can oscillate it just like we did with the other one, and you see, so what's being shown here is the electric field. In green, the electric field goes up, and then it comes back down, and so that wave is transferred all the way across here, and so you see this is... Um, the source, and then I go over to this other guy, and he's got an antenna, and he's actually sensing that wave energy that we produced over here. And so, um, kind of similar to the way that we started mechanical waves, but a little bit different in terms of what actually comes out of it. So, how exactly do electromagnetic waves travel? All right, so first of all, they're not associated with the motion of molecules. We just looked at that. Um, so we don't have to worry about any, you know, particles or molecular bonds. And in fact, electromagnetics, electromagnetic waves don't require a medium at all. So there's no physical matter that's required for the wave to travel to. They can even travel through the vacuum of outer space. The vacuum just means that there's nothing there. There's not even air particles. There's no matter at all. And so electromagnetic waves are able to travel through that. And thank goodness, because light is an electromagnetic wave. It comes from the sun and it reaches the earth. We need that to survive. And so um, electromagnetic waves simply can travel through a vacuum. They don't require particles to move through. Um, not only can they travel through a vacuum, but they travel at the same speed. So there's several different types of electromagnetic waves. They all go the same speed, which is the speed of light. Now, the speed of light is an enormous number, 300 million meters per second. Um, or you could say uh, about 186,000 miles every second. All right, so, if, I mean, obviously that's very fast. If I was to take a stopwatch uh, and calculate how long it takes the light when it's produced at the sun until it gets to earth it should take about eight minutes so it's i mean that tells you two things the distance is very far but also that light travels very 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 fast as far as the parts of an electromagnetic wave goes um, we can identify some of the same things that we did on the transverse mechanical wave so an electromagnetic wave is going to have an amplitude where it's the height of the wave above our equilibrium line it's going to have a crest which is the high point it's going to have a trough which is the low point it's going to have a wavelength where it's the distance between either two troughs or two crests all right the the distance of one cycle there is one small exception though because we can't just look at it exactly like a transverse mechanical wave electromagnetic waves actually kind of have two waves connected together and so I would have uh, you're looking at kind of a 3D graph here I would have something going up and down on the y-axis which is my electric field and then I have something going side to side on the z-axis so it, if you have an x, a y, and a z it kind of makes this little 3D figure up here and so they're traveling on two different planes but they're traveling together. 
And so it's it looks a little funky. It's pretty crazy looking, but that's that's more or less what's happening. It's it's the same amplitude, the same wavelength, the same crest and trough, but happening on two different planes. Um, with energy in an electromagnetic wave, again, it depends on the same things as the mechanical waves we talked about. So um, the amplitude and the frequency are what determine how much energy an electromagnetic wave has. So over here, right, I have graphs with two different amplitudes. The blue is a little bit shorter than the red, and so the red would have more energy. And over here, I have two waves with different frequencies. The red has a real long frequency, or a real, real small frequency, so there's not a whole lot of waves kind of crunched into that space. And then the blue has a higher frequency because I fit more waves into that space, and so the blue would have more energy than the red. As far as classifying electromagnetic waves, they're organized and categorized by their wavelength. So we talked about frequency before, now these ones are a little bit different. We, we classify them by wavelength. And there's a whole range of electromagnetic waves um, that are classified on what's called the electromagnetic spectrum, which you've probably learned about a little bit before. All right, so it goes radio, microwave, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, x-ray, and gamma ray, um, and that is the order of decreasing wavelength. Okay, and so that is what we call the electromagnetic spectrum. We're going to look at that again in a second here. As far as the energy goes, um, remember that they're classified by their wavelength, but we only know how to identify energy from our frequency. So we have to know that the wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional. With All that means is that as one of them goes up, then the other goes down. So if the wavelength is going up, then the waves are getting really long, and so the frequency is getting smaller. The wavelength went up, the frequency went down. So if I'm looking at the electromagnetic spectrum, we can use that to identify what waves have the highest energy, what waves have the lowest energy. So here's a picture again, all right, just a little bit different. So we have radio, microwave, infrared, visible light, UV, X-ray, and gamma ray, and the wavelength um, is going down as we go across here. So you can actually look at these little example waves that they put in here and you can see that they're getting more and more frequent. So as the wavelength goes down, the frequency is going up. All right, And so we said the higher the frequency is, the more energy it's got. So the highest frequency over here is gamma rays, so they have the most energy. The lowest frequency is radio waves, they have the lowest energy. So that was just kind of our quick crash course in electromagnetic waves. It should kind of reinforce the things that you've read about in the, the guided notes there. Um, I hope that this was helpful kind of in clarifying anything that was missing there.